Hey guys, welcome to another computer graphics tutorial. Today we'll be learning about realism in 3D graphics. Many computer graphics application involve the display of 3D, three-dimensional objects and scenes. For example, CAD, computer aided design and simulation systems. These application differ from two-dimensional application not only in the added dimension but they also require the concern for realism in the display of the objects. So what that means is it's not just an extra dimension that is added but you should also actually feel the realistic view of those objects in 3D. Producing such a realistic image of three-dimensional scene on a 2D display or two-dimensional display presents many problems. How is the depth, the third dimension to be displayed on the screen? How are the parts of the objects that are hidden to the removed parts of the image? How lighting, color, shadows and texture contribute to the rendering? There are a number of techniques that have been developed to address these questions. So let's take a look at those techniques. These are the techniques for achieving realism in 3D. First technique, parallel projection. So you can take a look at this example over here. See, this is one image and this is the second image. Okay, this is basically the top view. Okay, this is basically the side view and when you have parallel projections drawn from these two images, this is what we get. Okay, this is called parallel projection. All right. Yeah, a simple technique, the parallel projection is illustrated in the above figure where a point on the screen is identified with a point in three dimensional scene by a line perpendicular to the screen. This is usually used by an architect with two elevation views and one plan view. Though it's more accurate representation, but it's really difficult as the viewer needs to understand and reconstruct the image in his mind. As you can see, it really looks complicated because the user has to actually imagine how it is going to look. Okay, so though it is very much accurate, if you are an engineer, you must have learned uh, one subject called engineering drawing in which we used to draw similar images. But it's really complicated. The image looks really complicated. Now let's take a look at another technique, perspective projection. Perspective projection is perhaps the most common projection technique familiar to us as image formed by eye or lenses of photographic film are perspective projection. So basically what you see in real life is perspective projection as it sounds. What is the perspective and the projection? The perspective projection conveys depth information by making distant object looks smaller than the near ones. As we know, suppose let you place two glasses of water, one near you and one just far away. When you look at it from front view, what you are going to see as the glass that is near to you looks larger than the glass that is far away. The disadvantage of this is if objects have only limited depth variation, the image may not provide adequate depth information and the ambiguity appears. For example, let's say there are 10 glasses, okay, but they have very small difference in their depth or we can say difference between their distance at which they are kept from the viewing point. Then it won't provide enough information about the image. You can see in this also, if let's say these two objects are same, okay, of same size, but this one is kept near the viewer and this one is kept at a distance. So that's why this object looks bigger than the second object. This is perspective view or perspective projection. Now let's take a look at third technique. Intensity cues. One depth cue that is not expensive to implement in hardware is modulation of the intensity of lines with the depth. So what this means is you change the intensity of the lines of the object or image. Lines far away appear fainter than that of the near of the viewer. On a raster display, a line can be made wider near the observer and then when it is uh, far away, you, may, you can make it thinner. These techniques are useful for simple objects. As the complexity of image increases, the effectiveness from the queue usually decreases. So this is only applicable where the images are simple. Okay, You can use this technique effectively only when the objects are simple and the image is simple like this. You can see these edges of the cube or the object when which are near to the user they can be made thick so that you get an idea that they are near the user whereas the one which are far away you can just make them look fainter. Okay. Fourth one is stereoscopic view. A dramatic depth cue 
is provided by generating two stereoscopic images. Now, when you look at this word stereoscopic view, what does that tell you? Stereo means two, scopic. Okay, so for example, you have stereo headphones. It means you have two ear pieces for two different ears. It is similar way over here. One image is shown to the left eye and it's generated from a view appropriate to the location of that eye. So basically what your left eye would be able to see is the image that is shown to your left eye while the other is generated analogously for the right eye. Several techniques can be used to permit such eye to see only the image intended for it. Two separate screens can be used, one for each eye like this. You show this image to your left eye, you show this image to the right eye. This is called stereoscopic view. This is used for adding realism in the 3D. The next technique is kinetic depth effect. Depth relationship can be understood by watching an object move. A very revealing motion is rotation about a vertical axis. Lines near the viewer move more rapidly than those far away. Lines on opposite sides of the rotation axis appear to move up in opposite direction. Like when you are when you are driving in a car, okay, and there are sides behind, uh, not sides. When there are trees besides your car, what you can see is the trees are running. But actually, what is happening is you are running and the trees are stationary, or you are driving and the trees are stationary. So it appears as if those objects are moving. In reality, you are moving. So that is kinetic depth effect. Hidden line elimination. The relative depth of object in a scene is readily apparent if the lines that are hidden from the view by opaque objects are removed from the image. Obviously, if you cannot see them, you don't display them. Okay. This technique requires considerable computation, but is nevertheless useful for producing finished pictures of a scene. Why this is important? Because it doesn't confuse the user, though this is very difficult to op, uh, to obtain but it's really important so that you get a clean and finished look for example see this is a cube that we have okay now these are the uh, this is the actual view okay this is how the actual object is you have these uh, sides which are not visible these are the lines that are not visible of the cube but since the cube is opaque what you do is you just remove these hidden lines okay so this line would be removed this line would be removed and this line would be removed and this is how the object will look after hidden line elimination next technique is shading with hidden surface removal on a raster scan display showing the color and intensity of surfaces helps to convey the depth and shape of an object basically it lets user get to understand the direction of incident light and the orientation of the surface with respect to the viewer so basically what happens is when you do shading you let the user know on which side there is source of light okay on which side the shadows are falling and it lets the user know what is the depth and the orientation of the object that is kept okay and this you do of course with the hidden surface removal so that's it these are the seven techniques for getting realism in 3d if you have any doubts any queries feel free to ask them in the comment section below guys i am working really hard to get all this information for free for you guys. So please make sure that you subscribe and share this video with your friends as much as possible. Okay. And if you have any queries, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Please like this video. And if you have any other video requirements or any topics you want me to make videos on, please feel free to ask them. Thank you.